the guys are here and I keep trying to give them like the rundown, but they keep just sawzalling again before I get finished. You're like my kids. Nobody cares. Like just listen about, for why? five minutes. Just tell me what to do. The last thing is we're gonna add solid risers to these. Uh, so we're gonna actually have to block this out the same so that the stair tread length doesn't change. Just so you know. If I had known all this, I would have stayed home. <laughs> Jason just asked me, why don't I just rip all this out and just start again from scratch? Because a lot of it's kind of screwed up. And my answer is, it's good enough. Like, it's really close. I can do a little uh, fixing here and fixing there, adjusting here, adjusting there, and do a little bit of work and we can be done with it versus just scrapping everything and starting over. I don't think it's worth it. I mean, we're just making it as good as the rest of the house, which is, <laughs> you know, not perfect. Dude, these are all jacked. We're cutting all these out. <laughs> no, I, the I don't have stringers well, to make we'll new ones. Stringers. Yeah, so we're just gonna do what I was gonna say, and yeah, and we need a sawhorse sponsor. <laughs> As you guys know, we've been using these pencil pull pro things for our pencils so you don't lose them. And what I found is that I'm so used to this thing that if I grab a pencil out of my belt for some reason and then I use it, when I'm done, I just drop it. <laughs> and, then I, and then later I'm like, what is that pencil doing there? And it's because I'm so used to just doing that that now it's just muscle memory every time. <laughs> Having closed risers like that is actually code now. You can't have just a big hole where you could fall through, your leg could fall through, like a baby could fall through. Uh, so that's one of the reasons I want to do this, to bring it up to code. See how they walk. Uh, it should feel a lot better. Solid. Solid as a rock. Dude, it feels so good. ready for the stair treads now and we're using duck back still but it doesn't have the interlocking waterproof feature these are just plain boards because we don't need these stairs to be waterproof so it's going to match on top but not be waterproof and a lot easier to install we've got our giant uh, cut station i'll call it here because these are still 20 foot boards they're a little unwieldy on two or even three sawhorses so we've got basically one two three four five support points to keep that thing straight and it was easy enough just to do it on the ground so that's what we're doing we're going to hang off an inch on each end uh, which is going to waste a little material but we do have enough and i think that looks a lot better i'm using these longer trim head screws to install these and i'm just driving them flush and they they really disappear pretty well that's one right there uh so yeah looks good Doing the trash run and it seems like a truck like this would come with the connection that gives you trailer brakes but this one didn't and i haven't had it done so 
when we go down this big hill where we got to stop right at the bottom, I'm going to go four wheel low and just let it crawl because I'm not real sure. We've probably got 5,000 pounds behind us and a 20% incline I got to stop on. Mm. I rode with the wrong person. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> it's really good for your truck to put it in <clears throat> four wheel low range on pavement. Yeah. <laughs> Usually on this truck, the, t the brakes are so touchy, you don't feel like you're going to go through the windshield, but right now I feel like I'm really pressing hard. Probably doesn't look at all exciting on camera. <laughs> Looks like we're just going four miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, good. going out into that. Actually, we traffic. are going four miles an hour. <laughs> the problem is there's traffic going by here, usually at about 50 miles an hour that way at the bottom. So I just want to make sure we stop. When it snows, it is really exciting yeah. to get stopped right here. That's why I'm still alive and I'm 40 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Played it safe most of the time. All right, good. I don't know where to go right now. I don't know either. They sent us to the real landfill. Oh, big operation right here. Yeah. Uh, we're going back to the way station because they say we can't get out of the truck without hard hats and a vest on. He was like in his dozer with it running and it's giant smoking a cigarette saying, you all got a hard hat and a hard hat. I was like, <laughs> what? And he was trying to tell me, do y'all have a hard hat and a vest on? If not, go back to the place and they'll give you one. I'm surprised you made that out. <laughs> yeah. Now we're ready. <laughs> Super official now. That really added to the enjoyment right there. Difference. Like <laughs> yeah. it just still just smells like crap. So. You gonna come to work tomorrow after that? Uh, are we coming back out here? <laughs> no. Then uh, I guess I'll come. <laughs> yeah. Pan down and tilt move right there. That's how you get it done. That was nice. Go ahead, Ben. Try them out. Let's go. Good boy. All the decking is installed now. Good job, guys. So now we're in prep mode for wrapping these posts with some finished material. But before we do that, we have to do some flashing tape that goes down the post and out over the decking to make sure water doesn't get in around the post ever. And what's recommended here is butyl tape, but what I have is Zip System stretch tape. It's a flashing tape. So we're gonna put that on and then we'll cut it flush with our finished material after we install that. You do have to apply pressure to this tape to get it to bond permanently. So we're gonna use one of these sheathing tape knife things and just sort of press on it. They do make rollers, but this is kind of a weird place to use it, kind of tight. So just pressing on it, making sure it really bonds to the deck and to the post uh, really well. Uh, and then we're going to cover it up. This video is brought to you by Lentum and they make modern LED lighting for your home that's smart. So it can connect to your Google Assistant or to your Alexa and do a lot of fun stuff. And I wanted to finish our deck remodel by replacing these two old sconces with something better and modern. So we're going to get to doing that. We wanted wall sconces back here that would be sleek and modern and match the rest of our modern deck makeover with cable rails and all of that. And we also wanted super bright lights so that we could light this place up. And these LED lights are the equivalent of a 200 watt incandescent light. So we can really light it up back here and it'll look great. And what's gonna be really fun about these lights for our party deck here is that they'll meet our regular lighting needs but when we want to have special atmospheres for special occasions, we can change the color to just about any color in the world and set a cool mood. On top of that, you can set the color and the brightness via voice control. This is going to blow my kids' minds. And these sconces are built to last and resist the elements. They're made out of heavy-duty aluminum and tempered glass. 
Also from Lintum, I got warm white string lights, and these are LED bulbs as well, and they're shatterproof bulbs meant for the outdoor, and I can control these with my smart features and turn them on from anywhere just like my sconces. And of course, the LED bulbs in my string lights and my sconces will use less energy, so that's better for the environment. They can also go up to a cool white, which lights better at night for your doorways, and you'll never have to replace a bulb. Other cool smart features include the ability to make scenes, which could be a schedule or it could be even based on the weather or a change in the device status. We're all set up here and it looks great. I'm gonna set these to red and green for Christmas coming up. Thanks to Linum for sponsoring our video. Make sure to head down to our video description where there's a link to all of their products and you can get some for yourself. Let's get back to work. post was really twisted so we actually needed more than three and a half inches of room inside of our you know finished column so we're just <laughs> taking out some of the inside of this thing with planer then with a the chisel i think that'll give us the room we need to get the corners actually come together tight you guys are doing a great job yeah we're working till dark it's only because the daylight savings time thing just switched it is 5.09 it's only five o'clock <laughs> <laughs> seems like about eight o'clock Seems to brighten the camera. Oh, really? Yeah. You guys got another like hour with the camera. Okay. We're back on our deck here, and if you didn't gather, this is a pretty long project. It's got a lot of steps, it's a lot of work, but today we're gonna finish wrapping this other post and start setting the posts for the railing and try to work all that out. Basically, it's gonna be aluminum posts with an aluminum top cap, then we're gonna do cable rails. I don't have the cables yet, but we're gonna start prepping. And there's a couple funny things about it, and we'll show you that in just a second. Our posts are Decorators brand aluminum, kind of a prefab thing with a base on it. And I bought these at Lowe's. The black ones were like 55 bucks. And then I went in and they had some white ones that were on sale for like $13. So I bought all those as well and I'm just gonna paint them black. So these were a really cost effective thing for that post. We've built them out of steel before ourselves, like welded the whole foot on the bottom and drilled the holes and, and done all the painting and priming. That was a lot of work. So this was a super efficient way. I don't know if I like this wind chime or if I think it's really creepy, that sound. It is, it's kind of I, I don't, feeling. I don't really, I don't know. I didn't buy that. Yeah. Somebody else did. We've set a few of these posts now, so we have our method down. So now I'm gonna show you how I'm doing it. Just for one, in case you're curious, there's two things we're battling here. One is this is waterproof, and we're drilling a bunch of these big GRK RSSs, and these are five six eighths diameter, by the way, through here, so that needs to be sealed. And number two, this whole deck is sloped, so we don't want our posts to also be leaned over. So I'm shimming the post back plumb. I'll show you how we're doing that. The placement here looks kind of funny. It looks way in. Uh, but that puts these two screws in the edge band framing, and it also puts the center of this post in line with the center of that post for our cables. So that's why they look so far in. I, I'm kind of wasting a little deck here, but it's just what it has to be. Once I have the locations marked, I'm pre-drilling with the lags that have a little cutter head on them, and then I'm gonna fill it with Lexel, the whole hole, and fill everything up so that when I run these back in permanently, it's all just sealed. Next, I'm putting the post in location. I'm using a torpedo level, and I'm using these little zinc-coated washers as shims, and I'm just setting them under there, you know, and like I'm gonna put two there, probably two there, because I know that it's leaned that way already. And uh, check that. See what we got. Ooh, that's a little too much, so I'm gonna go one and one. Pretty good that way. Let's check this way. Um, I might I might go two and one. 
like that. <laughs> it's like a, it's like a little game. It's like a little puzzle. Can I get it plum? That's good. Okay, so that's it. I got two here, one there, and one there, and none there, and that is basically what got the post plum. of our legs just to be extra safe I'm also just coating it with Lexel before I put it in just so it fills any voids if there are any remaining I'm just getting them all started like that once I got all these snug I'm doing some micro adjustments here and here wherever I need to to just barely tilt the post back and forth to plummet so I need to come down here a little just you know quarter turn or less kind of thing and that is making a pretty big difference pretty quickly I need to go a little bit more still this way is good gosh that's that's good enough it's really close next we're gonna go around the entire perimeter of our base here with some Lexel just keep water from running in there even more not that I think it would leak at this point but it doesn't really hurt to do that and last, we're installing our base trim and our top cap. That's gonna make everything look nice and finished up. As far as my post spacing goes here, I'm trying to go about five foot on center. That's good for cable rails. And there's one section here though, that's a little more. It's like five foot seven between here and here. And I just left it. It looked kind of dumb to have a post at two and a half feet in between. What'd you think, Ray? Yeah, that would have looked it, silly. Yeah, it looked too close. So that'll fly for my house. If this was someone else's house, I might consider putting it in because the cables can deflect if you like pull them. Like if a kid tried to pull them apart, not that my kids won't do that. But um, I think I've trained them in life to know if you do something dumb, it's your own fault. Ray's got some self etching primer there. What you got? Well, self etch. <laughs> Just what I said. We're going to prime and paint these terminations for each end of the top cap. That's important for bare aluminum, I think. That's what I read on the internet anyway. So I'm going to leave them painting the parts that I got the wrong color and those, and I'm going to go get the top caps in Asheville. They're 20 foot sticks. So I got the uh, 20 foot trailer and it's going to take forever because traffic's terrible over there. Looks like it. So this aluminum right here, six 20 foot sticks was a thousand bucks, which is a lot. And I thought about going with steel for that reason, but I don't ever want to have to deal with rust on this railing. So I think aluminum's the way to go. 